Hello guys, this is Maria from Forever Crafty, and I'm sorry I don't have the best lighting, um, so just bear with me. Um, anyways, yes, I am the owner of Forever Crafty, and I make characters for parties, so I have an Etsy shop, and so I have, I don't collect my characters, they literally all go off to their separate homes, wherever they are, were ordered from, so with that said, I will be doing a giveaway with this Alice, and she will be 18 inches big. Um, so I will be showing you guys how I design, um, her on design space as a 30 inch character, but I will be cutting her as an 18 inch character and then just giving her away. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. With this said, thank you and for sharing your space with me. And I just hope that your followers learn something from my, how I work and yes. So let's get this video started. Oh. Okay guys. So here is the same SVG file that the useless crafter has. And as you can see, it's grouped. So we are going to go ahead and ungroup it, which is down by actions. Once I ungroup it, I will start looking at, I'm gonna be working color by color. So we're gonna start with white. So what I do is I use contour. So I will unselect all the pieces except one of the whites. So just like that. And then once I'm done, I will duplicate that same piece and put it right over the other piece. And apparently I forgot to unselect the piece here, so I'll go ahead and unselect the skirt. And on the skirt, I will unselect that little triangle. And so, like I said, I will just duplicate, duplicate it, put it right over the same one. And then I will hide it and I will reveal another one. And I will just do this with each color. So once I am done with the white, I'll move on to the blue and then to the yellow until eventually all the um, colors are, all the colors are visible. So just to select it and you know, the reason why I place them right over the previous piece is so that whenever I unselect and reselect the new piece, it is in the correct place that it needs to be. So it will save me the hassle of trying to, you know, align it right where it needs to be. Okay, so as mentioned, I will just continue this over and over, and I might just do like a small time lapse just because I repeat this process over and over with each piece, so I feel like by now you'll kind of get the idea of how I work these pieces. Okay, so something else I want to add is that I do not design on a desktop. I 100% design on my iPhone. Um, all of my projects I've designed on my iPhone. I just feel like when it comes to designing, it is way much easier to do it either on a tablet or an iPhone. Just because as you can see those yellow lines, it literally aligns the things for you easily. Like it like grabs onto the project and or to the piece and puts it right over the other piece because I feel like it, it like knows what you're doing. Um, same thing like say you put a circle over a circle it'll literally tell you where the center of it is and you know align it perfectly with the cross so to me it's just easier to move and manipulate pieces on an iPhone or a tablet um, than it is on a desktop with a desktop you pretty much have to eyeball it or you can use the align feature that Cricut offers but for me it's just faster to do it this way um, but yeah that was just a fun fact that I wanted to add Okay, so as you can see, this is the last color that I am working on, which is her skin tone color. Um, now I'll go back and just make sure that all the pieces are separated. I even separate the lips just because sometimes the paper can tend to snag and I don't like that. So I'll just make sure everything's separated. Now at this point, I will resize her to 30 inches. So right here, I'm going to add a square. I will resize this square, making it 11 and a half by 23 and a half. Then I will position it right over Alice. I really always like the bottom part to, or the bottom, I'm sorry, the top part of the character to be as solid as it, it can be. And at the same time, I will make sure that the seams are also hidden by um, the other pieces of the character. So this, per this actually worked out perfectly for me. So then I'll go ahead and delete what I sliced and then I will hide those other two pieces and just contour again. So. I will fix that little red, yellow triangle, which that yellow triangle usually means that the project is too big and that Cricut cannot make it. So at this point, I will do what I've been doing this whole time, which is 
I'll duplicate that piece, put it right over the other piece, um, select a different one and unselect the other one. And then I will go back and fix that orange or I'll send everything to the back just to make sure that all the seams will be hidden. So I will actually change the color from black to white because white actually shows you like where the slits will be. And you can see this um, once I go back and select the color. So I'll select them all, which on, like I said on the tablet, you could just hold these down and it'll slowly select them. Change it to white. And then I'll zoom in. And you can kind of see the seams from here, but I'll zoom it in more. And then you'll see that her socks will actually lay over one of the seams and her dress as well. Um, and then with black cardstock, you really can't even see the seams. And whenever I cut it, I will show you guys because even though I will make her 18 inches, she will still have seams, I believe. Um, she will still be wide, not... I'm pretty sure she'll be more than 12 inches wide whenever I resize her to 18 inches. So now we are getting into the actual matte phase. And this is the part where I was telling you that sometimes Cricut just does not allow me to select the piece that I want. For instance, I could be selecting that shirt, but it will want it will make me select these other pieces. So th at this point, I'll just hide everything and just move the skirt over to that mat and then reposition it. And I'll slowly start to unhide pieces and then just move them around to where they fit i am a, I am a strong believer on saving paper so i will position these pieces as close as i can and just work around that piece so you will see at the end that my pieces will be very close to each other but it works for me so um yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and do that i'll reshow everything see which one is overlapping which then um, I'll just start hiding again and move them to where I need them to be. So, so I went ahead and just cut that part out. Um, it took me a while to get these pieces where I need them to be. As you can see, I have finally moved them where I, I wanted them. Now I'll work on the next mat, which is yellow, and just position it to where I can get, save the most paper. Um, now we're at the skin tone color. I'll move on to the lips. So yeah, I'll just do keep doing this same process with each mat and just move the pieces as close as I can. With this said, I feel like we are done with the design space part and I just hope that you guys were able to learn something, at least one thing out of um, how I work. And, and thank you, Anne, for allowing me uh, or sharing her space with me and allowing me to be part of this project. So I will now go and get Alice cut and get to assembling her as an 18 inch character. Thank you all, bye.